Now, I'm regularly asked, what are the tools that you recommend, Paul, for building WordPress websites? Well, today we're going to revisit a topic that I covered about 12 months ago, which are the essential plugins that I install on pretty much every website that I build using WordPress. Now, there are some that I've used from the previous video I did about a year ago, but there's also some new ones in here, and I'm going to explain the reasons why things have changed. I'm also stick around to the end because I've got some honorable mentions for different tools that I would recommend checking out that I don't install on everyone, but I do use them pretty regularly. Okay, let's kick things off with the first of my nine recommended tools. So first up, we've got Generate Blocks. I use the pro version for most things, but you can do an awful lot with the free version, including using dynamic data, using a tool we'll take a look at a little later in my recommended tool set. Now, I love using Generate Blocks for various different reasons. One, it's incredibly well crafted. Two, it's very, very fast. Three, it has a minimal tool set that makes you think about how you approach designs and not just literally throw the kitchen sink at everything. I love this. It's very easy to work with, but with the recent updates to Flexbox and so on, it is becoming an incredibly powerful tool. Pair this up with Generate Press and you have a formidable tool for creating great looking, fast loading websites that you don't really need to do much optimization to, to make them very, very quick to load. So that will be my first recommendation. Check out Generate Blocks. I'll put a link in the description to Generate Blocks and everything else I'll cover, but also to the tutorials and playlists and things that I've got on these various different tools that I recommend and use. Next on my list would be Perf Matters. Now I install this to just tweak and optimize the whole WordPress setup. As we've already covered, Generate Press and Generate Blocks are already very fast loading, but you can still get a little bit more optimization from WordPress itself, not specifically just the pages that you're creating. Perf Matters makes this relatively simple and straightforward without just bombarding you with a million different settings. I would recommend checking out the video that Kyle over from the admin bar did with the developers behind Perf Matters, where they go through every single setting and explain why and where you should use them. If you want to understand Perf Matters to get the the most out of it, that is definitely what you want to do. Check that video out, link in the description down below. Check out Perf Matters if you want to optimize things. Now, if you want one that you don't have to pay for that gives you a nice level of optimization, isn't overwhelming and does give you good results on many different setups, I would recommend checking out Auto Optimize. I've used this in many, many situations in the past and it's always stood me in good stead. Check out Auto Optimize, the link is in the description if you want a free sort of alternative to what Perf Matters does, but you don't get as much control as you do with a tool like Perf Matters. Check it out anyway, it's pretty cool. Now, even though a generate blocks comes with some basic conditional logic, there's still room for improvement. And if I'm using any kind of Gutenberg tools, even if you're using native Gutenberg blocks, you may want to check out block visibility, a conditional visibility plugin. Now, the good thing about this is the free version that was originally released, I don't know how long ago, had lots of nice options. But Nick Diego, the developer behind this, has now made the entire pro version of this completely free. So when you download this using the link in the description below, you'll have the full control, the pro version, all of those features for zero cost whatsoever. So if you need working with block visibility for various different things, especially if you're working with dynamic data or sites with sort of, you want to have different things set up for different locations, for different logged in statuses, for different user roles, all manner of different block visibility options. This is the one I would recommend you check out, not only because it's free, but also because it's incredibly powerful and very simple and straightforward to use. Now, most of the sites that I develop these days are a little bit beyond the basics of just creating your normal blog posts and pages and so on. And this is where I will be using advanced custom fields. A lot of the times, the free version of this is more than enough to get the job done. However, if you want the pro features like the gallery, you want repeater regions and so on, the pro version is another great option. I've got tons and tons of videos working with ACF free and pro. So if you want to check those out, again, I'll link some of those in the description down below. But ACF just opens up a ton of possibilities. And with the recent update where they have brought in the ability to create taxonomies and custom post types, we now no longer need to rely on a tool like CPT UI or custom post type UI that we've had to in the past. This 
is now totally self-contained for pretty much everything you'd want to do. If you want to extend it, I would recommend checking out ACF Extended. There's a free and a pro version of that. The free version has an abundance of options, and I'll be covering that in more videos in the future, including how to create your own front-end dashboard using those options included in ACF Extended alongside ACF Free. So be sure to make sure you subscribe to the channel to be notified as soon as they come out. But ACF and ACF Pro is another tool that I would recommend, and I use this on pretty much every project that I build because it's just simple, straightforward, and very well supported throughout the WordPress ecosystem and the plugins and the tools and the builders and so on you're probably going to be using. Now, when it comes to my SEO tool of choice, no surprise here, it's SEO Press. I've been a paying customer of SEO Press for probably the last three to four years, and I use this on every single site. Sure, there are other great SEO plugins out there, but I've always been very, very impressed with SEO Press, what it does how it's constantly updated to make sure that any changes that you need to get the best SEO, you have those. The free version has a boatload of options that should cover most use cases without having to spend a single cent, penny, or dime. But if you want the full fat version, then SEO Press Pro is definitely the way to go. So I don't really need to say too much about this. I've covered it in the past. I still recommend it, and I still use it on every single site that I develop. Now, speaking of tools I've been using for many, many years, I can't help but talk about WP Vivid Backup and Migration. Again, the free plugin does an awful lot, in, including allowing you to create staging sites, automated backups, backups, you know, all manner of different things. If you want a simple all-in-one solution, WP Vivid Backup is the way to go. But if you want more, then the pro version is one I would highly recommend. I bought the lifetime deal for this probably about three years ago, use this on pretty much every site that I have. And it just means that when I wanna do updates, I can set this to just make backups of what I'm updating. So it's plugins, themes, core WordPress and so on, instead of having to back up everything. This means the process is kind of completed in minutes. I've got a backup should I need to roll back anything that goes wrong with any of those plugins or theme updates gives me peace of mind, it's very easy to work with, it's quick, it's painless, and I use it on every single site. So, WP Vivid Backup, free or pro, great tool. Now, I think we all agree the dashboard of WordPress is still pretty much unloved. And one area that I think really does need some love and care and attention is the file management side of things. For me, I use Happy Files. Again, I use the pro version of this. There is or there was a free version. I don't know if the free version is still available. If it is, it used to give you up to 10 folders to organize your information, which for a lot of use cases could be more than enough. But Happy Files just means that I can organize my content into folders, I can drag and drop things around. I can just organize things to my heart's content. It's not just images. I can deal with post types, content. So if you want to organize things visually in folders, when you're creating posts or custom posts and all those kinds of things, it can all be done inside Happy Files. And with the update they brought out probably around about eight to 10 months ago, it is now faster than ever to work with. It's like working with a desktop application, but inside WordPress. For me, worth its weight in gold and absolutely use this on every single site because it's just so much of a time saver and a headache remover from the media management that you have as part of WordPress. Now, continuing along the customizing of the dashboard of WordPress, I use Ultimate Dashboard Pro on pretty much every site. Why? Because it allows me to not only customize the dashboard, but also customize the login experience. I can hide things I don't want. There's a free version, which gives you a lot of options, but the pro version gives you even more. I use pro on everything. It just allows me to customize and organize my whole dashboard. Perfect for me. And also when I'm handing off to clients, I can give them a much nicer user experience. Recently, this was also updated to work alongside Bricks Builder. So if you're a Bricks user and you want to create your own custom dashboards inside WordPress using Ultimate Dashboard Pro, you can now do that not only with Elementor or with the core functions inside the plugin itself, but you can now do it with Bricks Builder. I covered that very recently. You may want to check that out. Link in the description below. Now we need to talk about security. Now there are lots of options out there and everybody has their own preference. For me, I've been using iTheme security for probably the last eight or nine years, even before it was called iTheme security. It's 
relatively simple to set up. I mean, all security plugins do require you to have a little bit of an understanding about how things work. There's a wizard inside there to do it even easier, but you do need still need to understand what's going on. But it allows you to very quickly and easily run a wizard and cover off all the main things that you need. And then if you want to get in and tweak it, you can do. Again, there is a pro version, but I've never paid for the pro version. I've always used the free version and it's always been very effective in my experience. So for me, I think security is definitely the security plugin that I prefer when it comes to my WordPress websites for myself or for my clients. Okay, let's wrap things up with those honorable mentions that I said right back at the beginning of the video to stick around for. I've got three for you today, but I could literally fill a 30 minute video with multiple different options easily multiple times over. We're going to start off with Flowmatic. Now, Flowmatic is a great way of allowing you to connect up your WordPress website to a multitude of different services, whether they're WordPress based services and options or external things. So for example, you may have a e-commerce site that when someone purchases something, you want to connect them up to your CRM. You want to transfer the information over to a Google sheet. You also want to sign them up to your mailing list and send out an automated mail shot. And you may want to do 50 other things. Flowmatic is going to allow you to do that kind of setup. If you've ever used something like Zapier, this is going to be very familiar, but this is WordPress centric. It's all built into WordPress itself and allows you to connect up. But if you want to have an automation tool inside WordPress, check out Flowmatic. Now, next up, if you have a website that has lots of images, you are going to know that you need to compress those images either before you upload them, ideally, but if you've got clients that don't really understand how to do this, or you just want a simple, easy way of just uploading it and letting the actual server itself deal with it, you may want to check out the next two tools that I have on offer. First up, we've got WP Compress. I like WP Compress for various different reasons. Two of them are that you can have it to actually compress the images on the server and just basically use that to compress them, a one-off operation, or you can use the CDN as part of WP Compress to handle this dynamically off your site to take the weight and the pressure off your server. Great if you have shared hosting and you don't have a huge amount of resources, this is gonna give you that option. It also allows you to compress other files if you want to, but for me, the image side of things is the key. Next on the list is Short Pixel, another great tool that I bought into myself and I've been using this for several years. I don't use it on every site, but I do have it on some of my sites. I use the online service to compress images and I've also got sort of sub accounts set up with some of my client sites so I don't have to worry about this being optimized behind the scenes. Now Short Pixel allows you to compress images on the site itself so you can test it out and find out exactly how good it is or you can actually install the plugin and have this handle things behind the scenes for you they also have compression options hosting options and cdn options there's an abundance of different reasons why you may want to check it out but for me it's one of those tools that is always handy to have in the back pocket and if i want to have image compression being handled without my need to be involved in it this is pretty cool and both of the options that i've just covered will also allow you to store the originals on the server should you want to and roll back to those if you find any of the automations don't really go as planned and your images end up being a little bit rubbish you can get those back without any problem whatsoever and remove the compressed version or recompress it using a different option that you have as part of these different tools. But those are the nine tools that I recommend for every single site that I install and also a couple of honorable mentions. But as always, let me know your tools of choice. What do you install on every single website? Let me know in the comment section below, drop some links in there, and I can take a look at those and check them out for myself and maybe they'll be included in future videos. As always, all the applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts and until next time, take care.